hello. Hi, House of Hill. Happy hump day, you guys. It is time for another live happy hour hang. I am so excited to see you all back, to see you all here. You guys, we have so much to get into on this happy hour hang. I've been counting down the hours and the minutes because I need to discuss all of this tea with you, you guys. I am so freaking excited. We are talking about Paris Hilton and Mauricio Umansky. We're talking about Drake Bell and the Nickelodeon scandal. We're talking about Olivia Munn, Jennifer Lopez, obviously getting into all of this Kate Middleton controversy. You guys, I've gone down a rabbit hole. I've gone down a rabbit hole. I have maybe even more theories as to what could possibly be going on with her now. I have more updates for you. We're going to get into it. We're going to discuss it. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. But it feels like we are possibly in the midst of a true crime documentary. Like whenever I see all of the Kate Middleton stuff, it's giving true crime. It's giving me flashbacks to Diana. It's giving all of these things. And I cannot wait to get into it with you guys. We're also going to talk about Kim Kardashian and Bianca Sensory. Because if you guys can believe it, they were actually spotted hanging out. Kanye West's ex-wife and his current wife were together at the same place at the same time in close quarters. We're going to get into it. We're also going to talk about Kanye West and what he had to say about Hailey Bieber and Drake. I saw someone already in the chat say, did you see what Kanye West said about Drake? Yes, I did. He also dragged Hailey Bieber in the midst of that as well. And also to make matters even more interesting, Drake has responded to what Kanye had to say, which is making me LOL. His clap back to Kanye involves 50 Cent. So you guys know I'm living for it. Also, we're going to talk about Hailey Bieber as well, in addition to the Kanye situation, because poor girl has so many problems. She was seen out again. Her latest outing is fueling those rumors of her and Justin having marital issues. So we're going to get into that. I'm also going to fill you in on a little Selena Gomez tea and her reflecting on her documentary now that it's been over a year since it's been out. And then we're going to get into this Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey tea. Travis Kelsey was on the New Heights, on his New Heights podcast, talking about his experience in Singapore with Taylor. And also I have a new report from Entertainment Tonight to share with you guys that is giving us the tea about where Taylor sees this relationship going. I think we're all gonna be happy about it, but that's all I'm gonna say right now. We're gonna go ahead and check in and see what is going on in the chat. You guys, if you are here and you have not given this video a thumbs up yet, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your notification bell is on. Y'all know the YouTube notifications are 50-50 on whether or not they're working. So you know the best way to make sure you are on time for a live happy hour hang is to just make sure you set an alarm on your own. Miss Brenda, hello. Brenda said first live. Brenda, I hope you enjoy your first live and I hope you keep coming back for more. And welcome to the House of Hill if you're new to the House of Hill. Also, shout out to Water Lily. OMG, finally was able to make it to a live. I'm so happy you're here. Miss Kim, thank you, thank you, thank you. Kim said love to Madison and the House of Hill. Kim always starts the happy hour hangs off on the best freaking note. She's always bringing the sunshine, always bringing the positivity. Kim is always helping me welcome the new members of the House of Hill, new people who are finding these lives. So Kim, thank you so much. You are an icon. I appreciate you more than you know. Welcome to everyone. I'm so happy some of you are able to make it to your first live. Shout out to Ash. I love Ash. I'm here. I watch on two separate accounts so I can watch on the TV and chat on my phone. Ash is like, girl, I got you. I got you on the engagement. And Ash, that's why I appreciate you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, really quick, I want to say hello and shout out to our after watchers. After watchers, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Whenever you can tune into the tea, I saw somebody comment and I was just getting ready to respond until I saw the time and I was like, ooh, I have to log on. Um, but somebody said that they watch the happy hour hangs while they get ready in the morning and are doing their makeup and then finish them when they're driving to work. And that's what this is all about. You guys can get the tea whenever you want. Tabitha, 
Top of this said I had a dress fitting today. I wanted to send you, oh, she, she sent over some photos. I didn't want to overwhelm you. I'm so excited for you to see Madison. Oh my God, Tabitha, I'm gonna have to go check my messages to see your dress. That is incredible, congratulations. See you guys, 2024, the year of the House of Hill. Tabitha is getting married. So many of you have already started new jobs. Like, did we call it or did we call it? We absolutely called it. And we're just getting started. It's only March, even though part of me is like, it's already March, but then the other part of me is like, it's only March. So it's all in the perspective of how you look at it. This is our year, you guys. Miss Jelena said, how's everybody doing today? I made some peanut butter rice krispies today. First time making it ever, and I'm so happy how it turned out. Jelena, sounds incredible. Sounds delicious. Mama Hill makes something like that. She does a peanut butter rice crispy, and then she puts some like melted chocolate on the top. So it's like a chocolate peanut butter rice crispy situation. Chef's kiss. Your next round, try putting a little chocolate on top. So freaking good. My sister's tuning in from Florida. She's a little traveler these days. Shay, I'm jealous that you're in Florida, but thank you for still watching on, on your trip. I appreciate it. Let's see what else is going on, Miss Kiara. I'm so happy to be here live. I normally reheat the tea and fill in my boyfriend on all... Fill in my boyfriend on all the Selena and Kylie T. Kiara, I love you for it. That is my favorite thing about these happy hour hangs and the tea that we get to discuss on the happy hour hangs. I feel like the tea is more universal. You know what I mean? Like we get to really cover a wide range of topics. And also I hope your boyfriends enjoy that we're talking about Travis Kelsey. We are sports girlies now in the House of Hill. And sometimes we throw in a little OBJ, obviously, whenever we're talking about Kim Kardashian. But... We have some well-rounded tea, okay? We also have Jelena U. Madison. I made it live. Big kisses from Croatia. You guys, shout out to our international girlies again. You guys stay up until crazy times to watch this happy hour hang, and I cannot express how much I appreciate it. Like, the fact that you guys stay up to get the tea, to watch the tea, you are truly, truly, truly the best. And that's why whenever we can take this show on the road and we're doing live happy hour hangs, I gotta go international because I've gotta pay y'all back for always staying up late for the tea. Yes, my girl, 4.10 here in India. Four, four o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. An icon, an icon, an icon. We have Karina. Miss Jada said, I'm planning to go to Tokyo in the summer. Jada, dare I say, can I go in your suitcase? Tokyo is one place where my sister and I are dying to go because we want to go to Tokyo Disney. Actually, funny story, when we lived together, our Wi-Fi password was Tokyo 2020 because we were like, we're going to go to Tokyo in 2020. Then a little thing called the pandemic happened and obviously we weren't able to go, um, but it sounds like so much fun. I want to go to Tokyo so freaking bad. Valentina said, yes, see you in Italy. Valentina, twist my arm. Twist my arm. Italy is, I feel like Italy might be my next, actually, I don't know. I also really want to go to Paris. I want to go everywhere. I just want to be able to go everywhere, you guys. That's, that's the goal. I just want to go wherever you guys are. That's, that's where I'm trying to travel to. Nancy said, <clears throat> Woohoo! I'm catching you live. Howdy from Austin, Texas. Nancy, love Austin, Texas. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Jessica said, I'm such a night owl, plus I need the tea too much. Jessica, Jessica's UK girly. Thank you, Jessica. See you. Appreciate you. Love you. And then Naomi said, it's Thursday morning here in Australia. Thursday morning already? Crazy. I thank you for staying up. Barcelona, yes. And then Tamara, I'm dying. Tamara said, don't come to South Dakota. Tamara said, just skip South Dakota. Tamara, that's fine. We'll pick a destination that you want to travel to. And then we can skip We can skip South Dakota altogether. And then Timna said, 12.43 a.m. here in South Africa. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Sacred Space said, y'all are in the future over there in Australia. Truly, 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 truly. I hope the future is good. Let us know. Is Thursday, is Thursday looking good? I hope so. I hope so. You guys, we have so much tea, get in, tea to get into today. For those of you who are just tuning in, we're going to talk about Paris Hilton and Mauricio Umansky. We're going to talk about Drake Bell and the Nickelodeon scandal. That documentary, you guys, crazy. Olivia Munn, Jennifer Lopez. We're getting into the Kate Middleton tea. 
so much Kate Middleton to discuss. And I know that I did a full pop off on Kate Middleton yesterday, you guys, but there's even more updates to what I discussed yesterday. I have new theories as to what could be going on. I have gone through, I've gone through a spiral. I went through a big, 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 dark spiral of Kate Middleton theories and we need to discuss. We're also gonna be talking about Kim Kardashian hanging out with Bianca Sensory, crazy. Uh, Kanye West dragging Hailey Bieber and Drake and Drake responding. Hailey being spotted out, possibly trying to hide her wedding ring. Not good optics, you guys. Then a little bit of Selena Gomez tea, and then we're gonna get into the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey of it all. Wow, you guys, we actually have several people from South Africa in here. Okay, adding South Africa to the list, which I actually used to work with somebody from South Africa, and I know it is, it's hard to get there, but I'm coming. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, let's see, Ursilia, I finally made it to a live. Hi from Massachusetts. I'm an avid after watcher. I'm starting a new chapter in my life. I'm about to start school at 27. Wish me luck. Girl, good luck. You got this. 27, I feel like, is such a good year. And I, well, 20, I turned 27 during the pandemic, but 27, you know, you're past that mid past that mid 20s, you're on your way to 30, you're starting a new chapter, you're starting school. That is so freaking incredible. Congratulations to you. The House of the Hill is behind you. We got your back. I also saw, let's see, Haru, hi from Japan. It's 7 a.m. here. I'm getting ready for work. Haha, ha, please come visit. Yes, I will be coming to visit. I will be coming to visit. You guys, I wanna go to Asia so bad. Ugh. I wanna to go to all of these places, all of these places. It's midnight here in Palestine, I'm here for the tea. Thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. Sometimes it really blows my mind that we are international. Does it blow anyone else's or is it just me? Like every time you guys talk about where you are, whether it's Arizona, Austin, Texas, South Africa, Tokyo, I'm like, how, how are we international? This is the coolest, freaking thing. I feel so lucky. I feel so lucky that we are all here together at this time. Like that is truly incredible. We have Jamaica. Mama and Papa Hill went to Jamaica on their honeymoon. Love it. Love it. We also have Keep It Simple. Wow. I made it to a live. Yes. And I also think Norma, I saw Norma comment saying that she made it to the beginning of a live and Hillary saying kisses from Brazil. So you guys, we are all over the place spreading positivity all over the place, getting the tea all over the place, and that is what I freaking love to see. All right, you guys, we're gonna go ahead and get into this tea because we have a lot to get into. We're going to first talk some really quick reality TV. I would have loved to talk to you guys about the Love is Blind reunion, but it's not coming out until 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'm thinking what I might do for my Love is Blind people who are loving Love is Blind and who are waiting for the reunion just like me, I might do a little quick live either tonight or tomorrow morning, just a quick vertical live um, to recap the reunion because I've been dying for it. I tried to watch it on the treadmill this morning so I could talk about it with you guys. Jelena, I know you're waiting. I know you're waiting. And then I realized I can't watch it till 6 p.m. So I was like, well, that's freaking annoying, Netflix, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so if you are somebody who watches Love is Blind, let me know and let me know if you would be interested in me doing a live discussing the reunion. We don't have to make it very long, but if you're into Love is Blind and you wanna discuss the reunion once it's done, LMK, because I have a feeling I'm gonna need to discuss it with people because Shay refuses to watch it and Mama Hill refuses to watch it. So I'm gonna need to discuss it with y'all. Need to discuss it with my people. Um, Avery said, I absolutely love the diversity. Hi from Sacramento, Madison. I'm a guy who absolutely loves your channel. If the guys who love the tea could get a shout out who watches. Avery, yes, you're right. You know what? I am not, I do not shout out the men enough. I do not shout out the men enough. And you, we love you, we see you, and men love the tea too. So thank you for being here. And honestly, I appreciate a man who stays up to date on the tea more than you know. So thank you for being here. Also, I saw someone say there's a tornado watch. Get in the basement. You can watch the tea from the basement. Safety first. Safety first. Okay, 
I'm, I'm seeing you guys all say yes about the Love is Blind situation. So for sure, we'll do a little something to recap the Love is Blind reunion. Okay, let's go ahead and get things started. We're starting off with a little reality TV. Paris Hilton, you guys. The iconic Paris Hilton um, is actually having a little family drama, okay? She just shaded her uncle, Mauricio Umansky. Now, for those of you who are like, why is Paris Hilton shading her uncle, Mauricio Umansky? Who is this man? Let me give you a little backstory. So Mauricio Umansky is still married, despite being separated, to Paris's aunt, Real Houses of Beverly Hills star, Kyle Richards. Kyle's sister is Kathy Hilton. So Paris is her niece. Now, before Mauricio Umansky had his company that he has now called The Agency, he has a reality show about it called Buying Beverly Hills. But before Mauricio Umansky had his own company, okay, he worked for Paris Hilton's dad, Rick Hilton, Kathy's husband. He ended up leaving that company to start his own because he felt like Rick Hilton didn't appreciate him. He wasn't giving him enough money, wasn't giving him a big enough piece of the pie. This was covered on Real Houses of Beverly Hills at nauseam because whenever Mauricio ditched his brother-in-law to start his own company, it obviously caused a lot of drama between Kyle and her sisters. So we've heard this story, we've heard this whole song and dance, but like I said, Mauricio has a new reality show, Buying Beverly Hills, it's on Netflix, season two, they need the viewership, okay? So Mauricio is seen in a new preview for the show, discussing him leaving his brother-in-law's company to start his own. And he gets into a little more nitty gritty details. He talks about how Kyle stuck by him during this time, how much he appreciates that she stuck by him because obviously it caused drama with her whole family. Well, Paris saw that Mauricio was once again talking about her dad, talking about her mom, talking about their family. And Paris Hilton, is over it, you guys. She commented on a clip from the Netflix show saying, my father is a consummate gentleman and has always taken the higher road. He would never speak negatively about his family, especially in the press. Frankly, we're all sick of him using the Hilton name every chance he gets to plug his lame show. It's enough already. I was like, oh! Paris Hilton dragging her uncle? <laughs> I was living for it, honestly. Um, I found it hilarious, and I kind of agree with what Paris Hilton is saying. Mauricio Umansky has talked about this story multiple times on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Now he's talking about it again on his own reality show to obviously get clicks because Hilton's equals clicks. And I love that Paris Hilton came to her family's defense because you know, her dad's not on social media. Like Rick Hilton is too busy being rich. He is not on social media. He doesn't even pay attention to that. And Kathy, God lover, does not know how to use Instagram. Like I will see Kathy comment on Paris's Instagram like, hey, call me. Like God love Kathy Hilton. But social media clapbacks are not her specialty. So the fact that Paris Hilton took it upon herself to defend her dad, I personally was happy to see it. I did see somebody say nobody wins in family feuds. I think it was Jelena. And you are correct. Nobody does win in a family feud. However, I do feel like Paris is trying to give her, give her dad a little bit of a voice in this realm because she knows that he's not on social media. He doesn't know what's going on in reality TV. So that's why I feel like she defended him. But I agree, nobody wins. Obviously a lot is going on with Mauricio and Kyle Richards. They are separating after 27 years of marriage, which is still crazy to me. Um, but yeah, Amy said she said it with her chest. She said it with her chest, she really did. Leslie said, ouch, get him. Exactly. Sacred Space said Paris was standing up for the ugly word said about her immediate family. Exactly. There's a lot, a lot of back and forth that's gone on between Kathy and Kyle and obviously Rick and Mauricio. But I don't know. I was living for saying Paris get involved and Paris clap back. Again, not great to see a family feuding, but I do love when Paris Hilton gets her clap back on because it was funny to see her say that He's using them for his lame show. I don't know. 
<laughs> I just thought it was funny. Timna said, she's defending her dad. Good for her. I would do the same. Imagine someone doing that to Papa Hill, Madison. Oh, Timna. I even remember back at my old job, some people tried to be messy and like come for Papa Hill and come for Mama Hill. The way the claws came out, the way the claws came out, absolutely not. I would do the same thing. I probably would have said something even meaner, to be honest. Like, as a tourist, y'all know, you come for the people we love, we come for you. You have, you get the bull, or what is it? You come for the bull, you get the horns. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely not. Mm, no. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Drake Bell. Now, for those of you who are like, remind me, Drake Bell, Drake and Josh, millennials, Nickelodeon, remember, okay? Now, this is a crazy story because Drake Bell has spoken out for the first time about the abuse he suffered at the hands of Brian Peck, who was somebody who worked for Nickelodeon, okay? Now, Drake Bell told this story during a new docu-series called Quiet On Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. And this docu-series essentially exposes all of the bad things that happen at Nickelodeon, which I'm sure you guys have heard grumblings about over the years. There have been grumblings that there was a lot of shady stuff happening on the sets of Nickelodeon shows. Amanda Bynes, all that. Some of our favorite shows that we watched growing up, there was some weird dark stuff happening behind the scenes with Dan Schneider and some of the execs. Brian Peck. However, you guys, this is the first time that Drake Bell has admitted that he was the one who reported Brian Peck to the authorities back in the early 2000s. Brian Peck was actually arrested in 2003. He was accused of abusing an unnamed child. He ended up pleading no contest and spent 16 months in prison. But up until now, we didn't know who that child was who called the police. And it turns out it was Drake Bell. And this is a really big shock because Drake Bell was such a major, major, major player in Nick, during those Nickelodeon days. And I don't think anyone suspected that it was him. So it was a big revelation to find out he is the one who called the police on Brian Peck. Um, he claimed that he was groomed by Peck and that the assault took place when he was 15. He referred to the abuse as, quote, extensive and brutal now, obviously, Drake Bell has, you know, suffered with alcohol and substance abuse issues, and he said he thinks a lot of that was self-destructive behavior, obviously due to what he experienced when he was younger. He said it was a temporary, temporary fix, um, but just so, so crazy, and honestly, like, shout out to Drake Bell for finally feeling comfortable to come out and tell his story and tell what he experienced. Like, I think it really hopefully opens up people's eyes because I feel like he's been dragged a lot for going down a bad path. And I think we now can understand a little bit more as to why he did struggle with alcohol. He did struggle with substance abuse. It, it, there was some, there was some self-destructive behavior behind that. It wasn't just a child star turned bad. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm also happy that these people are being exposed, like sick, 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 sick. We knew, we obviously knew there was a lot of sick things happening, um, behind the closed doors at Nickelodeon. I see a lot of you talking about Jeanette McCurdy. Yes. Um, Dan Schneider was a freaking creepazoid beyond belief. Um, but I think it just definitely gives us a new perspective on Drake Bell. And I'm happy that he felt comfortable to, you know, share his story finally, honestly. Jelena said, I also think there's a major correlation between these child stars and being addicts because Aaron Carter was allegedly molested as well when he was a child. Oh, absolutely. I think that there is definitely a correlation between child stars and going down a dark path. I think you experience things a lot quicker than you should. You're thrown into cert like you're thrown into situations that kids shouldn't be experiencing. Um, you mature a little bit faster, so then people treat you as a mature adult, even though you're still a kid. I definitely think there's 
there's a there's several correlations between child actors and going down a bad path. Uh, Zaya said there was a lot of dark stuff at Disney Channel too. Oh, absolutely. Disney's not innocent either. I just feel like when it comes to having, I can't say the P word, but having people who engage in those activities, it was, it was really prevalent at Nickelodeon, but we just haven't heard about Disney. But I'm sure Disney is next. I'm sure this is going to empower people to speak forward and who knows maybe even more victims at the hand of brian peck and maybe people at disney are going to start speaking forward we don't know um but definitely a lot a lot of darkness happening amy said you know people knew what was happening choices were made to not see what was happening oh amy i agree i, I completely completely agree for sure um it's easier to turn a blind eye especially at that time when nickelodeon was making so much money like Nickelodeon was it, you know what I mean? Nickelodeon was the network. Um, so to find out that all of that was happening is just crazy. Brooke Wagner said, man's world, huh? I hope it keeps changing for the better. I hate that these shows we grew up on have a negative backstory. I'm happy people are coming out and exposing stuff. Agreed, agreed. It's about freaking time, you know what I mean? It is about freaking time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Olivia Munn. Um, because this is a story that freaked me out and I also want to share it because I think it's a good reminder to all of us here that we need to take our health seriously. So Olivia Munn, you guys, my favorite movie that Olivia Munn, Munn is in is Office Christmas Party, but she revealed on Instagram today that she was diagnosed with breast cancer in April of last year. She explained on her Instagram how her and her sister tested negative for the breast cancer gene, but that her doctor proceeded to do more assessments. She ended up going in for an MRI and they found out that she had an aggressive form of breast cancer. Yes, yeah, she's 43. Thankfully, because her doctor was proactive, they caught the cancer early enough. She had a double mastectomy. She said her doctor saved her life. And she also thanked her husband, John Mulaney, for being by her side. You guys, stories like this completely scare the dickens out of me, the daylights out of me, whatever you want to say, freak me out because A, she's so young, B, she really only caught this cancer because she had a proactive doctor. Now, Papa Hill is a doctor and he is an incredible doctor, but he will be also the first one to tell you that not all doctors are proactive, okay? And the fact that she was just feeling fine, going about life as normal, and meanwhile was living with an aggressive form of breast cancer, scary, 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 scary. So I just wanted to A, share this because it is a big story that's in the headlines today. And to Tamara's point, Tamara, I love you. Every time I watch your show, I swear you tell me things I had no idea about. Tamara, that's why I'm here. That is my job to fill y'all in. But I also wanted to share her story as just a reminder for all of us that we need to be proactive about our health. If we feel something is off, we need to go to the doctor. And I am the first one who writes something off. Like I'm like, oh, it's my allergies. Oh, it's just because I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like I am the first one to do that. And this situation, and also there was a story about Christina Applegate, how she actually, she was on the Today Show and she said that she, now in hindsight realized she was having symptoms of MS seven years before she was diagnosed. So just a reminder that we need to get checked. We need to make sure we are listening to our bodies. We need to do what we gotta do. Um, let's see, Normie said, my sister got breast cancer at age 38. She had to get a mastectomy for one of her breasts. See, that's what I'm talking about. 38, 43. Amy said, you need to advocate for yourself. Always listen to your body. Exactly. Epic Turtle said, advocate for yourself and document everything. If you've been denied care, make them make them put that they denied you in, denied you care in your chart. Exactly. Feel empowered to speak up. Feel empowered to speak up. That is always my thing. Don't just because somebody has a white coat and a degree on the wall, don't let them make you feel inferior, okay? Speak up for yourselves. We need to be proactive, and I'm happy that Olivia Munn is okay. Like so freaking scary. You know what I mean? Hi, Brianna. 
so spooky. Um, but I'm happy that she's okay. I'm happy she got the care she needed. And yeah, just wanted to share that message with you guys because it definitely, definitely freaked me out and stopped me in my tracks today. Also, 222 people are watching you guys. Go ahead and manifest something you want on that angel number. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, you guys. I see a lot of you sharing stories about similar things. Andrea said, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 40. I have Kaiser and was always denied a mammogram until last year when I was 31. Andrea, I, and insurance doesn't help. Oh, you guys, I could go, I could spend an hour and a half just ranting about the healthcare system. I'm very anti big systems these days because I've been watching too many documentaries. Um, Miss A said, my pop didn't address, the, didn't address his and when he was diagnosed with skin cancer. Things happened later than we wanted and we lost him in November. Don't be ashamed to get checked out and don't allow yourself to. Miss Ace, I'm so sorry about your pop. I'm so, so, so sorry. But you are so right. I think it's easy for us to write things off. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm the worst. I'm the worst one. I, I'm really bad about it. But that reminded me we do not need to be writing things off. We need to be taking things seriously. Okay, moving on to Jennifer Lopez, you guys. Jennifer Lopez is getting some backlash because she just canceled several tour dates without any explanation, okay? So she's touring for her new album called This Is Me Now. And according to Ticketmaster, she canceled five dates out of nowhere in Nashville, Raleigh, Atlanta, Tampa, and New Orleans. Jelena, Jelena just took me out. Jelena said, Jennifer Lopez is going on tour. <laughs> oh, also hello, Terry Bell. Madison, hello. You remember me from Holly Scoop, Terry Bell. Yes. Hi, Terry. I'm so happy you found me again and you found this live. So Jennifer Lopez just canceled these shows. No explanation. All she did was just post the revamped tour schedule on her Instagram. And now a lot of her fans are irritated because she isn't saying anything. And they're like, okay, should we buy tickets? Because what are the chances she's just gonna cancel our show and then we might not get a refund? Like what the heck is going on? I personally also did not know Jennifer Lopez was going on tour, to y'all's point. I also saw some, Leslie said Jennifer who, just kidding. A lot of y'all didn't know she was going on tour. Kim didn't even know she was still singing, <laughs> well. And I personally think that she canceled those tour dates because nobody was buying the tickets. And that's no shade to JLo. Again, a lot of us just were unaware. Um, but I do think this album, people aren't clamoring for it like she had hoped. You know what I mean? She did do the documentary. We loved getting an inside look at her and Ben Affleck's reconciliation. We love that. Um, but I just feel like things aren't selling. That's my theory. Okay, Noelia said they weren't selling at all. That's how I feel too. I just feel like, are people still obsessed with Jennifer Lopez like they were? You know what I mean? I, I'm genuinely asking. I personally like old Jennifer Lopez. Like early 2000s J-Lo, Jenny from the Block, Let's Get Loud, Love, Stan, will be listening on repeat. Current J-Lo? I don't know. I just... I'm not as big of a fan, and I think it's because she doesn't give me humble like she used to. You know what I mean? Like, which she doesn't need to be humble. She's worked her tush off. She does a lot of things. She has a lot of projects. She does a lot of movies. She obviously is very successful. She doesn't need to be humble. Um, but I liked her. I just liked her a little bit more back in the day. You know what I mean? I liked her before we found out she was rude to staff. I liked her before we found out she doesn't like women employ female employees to look her men in the eye. I liked her a lot better before I found out she was such a diva and allegedly insufferable to be around. You know what I mean? That is when I loved J-Lo. Current J-Lo, 
I don't love as much. A lot of you are saying you prefer her acting and you like her movies. I mean, hello, Wedding Planner, an iconic film. Monster-in-law, Jennifer Lopez and Jane Fonda. Are you kidding me? I love 12 out of 10. It's one of my comfort movies. Um, but yeah, for some reason, I just feel like Hustlers loved it, Katya said, loved it. It's just not, she just doesn't hit the same. She doesn't hit the same. Yes. Now, obviously, all of the stuff about employees is alleged, y'all, but there are several people who have confirmed that. And even on her most recent interview she did, someone, like, jokingly asked her about what she does if she sees a woman flirting with Ben Affleck. And she was like, oh, if you're flirting with my husband, like, I'm coming for you. So she definitely does not mess around with her men. She does not mess around with her men. Bailey K said, anyone try JLo skincare products? Any good, any good worth the money? Bailey K, Mama Hill got some as a gift and she did not like them. Mama Hill did not like them. She said she felt like all of the products smelled like sunscreen and she was not a fan. So if that helps. I also have an issue with her and her skincare line because she said that she doesn't get Botox and she doesn't get laser, she doesn't get anything. She just does her skincare. And that irritates me because homegirl is getting Botox, okay? Let's be honest, let's be real, okay? The fact that she's sitting up there and telling people that you can just use her skincare products and look like her at 50 is a bunch of BS. Just say I get Botox and I also use my skincare products to help keep me youthful. But don't lie, don't lie about it. I do not like that. I do not like that at all. I'm giggling at all of you being like, oh, if Mama Hill says it's a no, it's a no for us. You guys, the way, whatever Mama Hill says, and I'm so happy you guys feel the same way, because everyone who knows Mama Hill personally, it's like, if she says it's a no, that's gospel. Like, just like WWJD, what would Jesus do? We also do WWVD, what would Vi do? Because if Mama Hill says, it's a no, or if Mama Hill makes an opinion on something, that's it, that's it. I'm like, that's all I need to know. And I'm giggling that a lot of you are like, oh, if she said it's a no, it's a no for me too. I love that so, so, so much. April said, I wonder how the dynamic is between JLo and Jennifer Garner. Garner is an angel, so I'm curious the dynamic since JLo gives major diva vibes. April, I wonder that too. I wonder that as well. I feel like Jennifer Gardner, which you guys know, Stan Jennifer Gardner here in the House of Hill. I feel like Jennifer Gardner is very down to earth and just is somebody who's going to be kind no matter what. Like she strikes me as somebody who, when her and JLo are together, she's kind, she's down to earth, she's sweet. And then as soon as she leaves that situation, she probably has to like debrief to her boyfriend, John. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, that was a lot. That was crazy. Like Jennifer Garner would never let JLo see her sweat, but you know when she leaves that situation, she's got to debrief, as we all do sometimes. Dave said, has to be weird for Ben. Jen to Jen to Jen, LOL. Honestly, T, 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 T. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Kate Middleton because I want to make sure we have plenty of time to flush this out and then we still have a lot to get into. Kate Middleton, you guys. What the F is going on? Also, if you're here and you haven't given this video a thumbs up yet, please, please, please go ahead and do so. Please go ahead and do so. So, if you guys saw, I did a full pop-off on Kate Middleton yesterday. Kind of breaking down the timeline of things, but it's getting weirder by the day, and we have even more updates today. So you guys know, really quick re Recap for those of us who need it. The last time Kate Middleton was seen in public, Christmas Day. January 16th, she goes in for this abdominal surgery. She goes home 10 days later, and we have not seen her physically. Kate Middleton is Prince William's wife. She is the heir to the throne because William will eventually be king. She will eventually be queen. I saw someone say, who is she? a major player in the royal family. So 
We have not seen her physically since the surgery. The only times we've seen her are a couple grainy photos of her in the car, and then that photo that was posted on Instagram that she says she edited, okay? Weird. Now you guys know there are several conspiracy theories surrounding why she may or may not be absent. We've heard that she might be in a medically induced coma. We've heard that she may be getting treatment for her mental health. We've heard that her and William are having issues in their marriage. New theories, you guys, new theories. One of those new theories, which actually, shout out to Mama Hill. She is the one who heard grumblings of this and asked me to look into this. One of the new theories is that Kate is allegedly suffering from an eating disorder and like a very, very bad one. And I looked into this because I was like, do we think this is true? Is this even possible? And what's interesting, you guys, is there are several reports that came out at the end of last year that were pointing out how Kate Middleton has lost an alarming amount of weight, how her face has changed, how she's gotten very thin. And there was also several reports and tweets about the fact that Kate Middleton had her index finger and her middle finger bandaged on and off several times towards the end of last year, which apparently that is a sign of bulimia. Trigger warning, by the way. Um, which I had never heard, um, but apparently that's a thing. And there are rumors out there now that her eating disorder got so bad that some of her organs started to not function properly, hence why she needed surgery, and hence why she is in this long recovery. Because not only is she recovering from surgery, allegedly she's also getting treatment for, again, a mental health struggle. Um, and I also think that's an interesting point because that also would kind of be in accordance with, remember that In Touch Weekly report we heard about, about how that source said the reason why she hasn't done a broadcasted announcement is because she's lost an alarming amount of weight, she doesn't want to scare the public, she's shockingly thin. So that's an interesting new theory that people are now talking about and that I'm kind of like, ooh, I could see it. Uh, we're talking about Kate Middleton. I saw someone say, I just jumped in. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Kate Middleton. I also want to say hello to Betty. Betty said, hey, you. Hey, Betty. Hey, 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 Betty. Um, so that's one new theory, you guys. Another theory out there is, okay, Kate and Will were having issues in their marriage, all right? There's a theory that Kate may or may not have been involved with this man named Thomas Kingston. Thomas Kingston was married to William's cousin, okay? He actually dated Pippa for a second as well. He was found, all right, last week with a gunshot wound. The gun was at the scene and the police chose not to investigate. The police come upon this body and yes, I know it looks like he was responsible for his own death, but normally you're supposed to investigate that regardless, okay? The police didn't investigate this. William went to this man's funeral earlier this week by himself, but people are thinking that this also might be linked. So there's a true crime aspect of it. This man who is married to William's cousin may or may not have been linked to Kate Middleton, we haven't seen her. He shows up deceased and the police aren't investigating and William goes to his funeral alone. Weird timing. Also, I have more for you guys. The crown, I know. Also, there are rumors that William has still been allegedly having an affair with this woman. Her name is Rose Hanbury. There were rumors that they were having an affair back in 2019, okay? Her family has a lot of royal ties. She used to live next to Kate and Will. They were all friends until they had a major falling out. People thought they had a falling out because William was having an affair with this Rose woman. Now people are bringing that back up into the mix. Spooky, okay? Now what's even weirder 
is we also got a new report from Radar Online, you guys, that revealed that Kate is actually thinking about taking a step back from the royal family, pulling a Harry and Meghan. This Radar, this Radar Online source said, quote, Kate's been painted the villain, a racist who questioned the color of Meghan's son, Archie, before he was born, who made Meghan cry before her wedding and who went out of her way to not be friendly. Those stories will never go away, which is one of the reasons Kate wants to retreat. So, my mind is spiraling, right? My mind is spiraling because I'm like, is there a possibility that Kate wanted to take a step back, possibly leave the family, and they said, absolutely mother effing not. And now we have this weird disappearance situation. Normie said, I'm gonna need the crown season seven after all this. Normie, same. Because you know this is supposed to be the last season of the crown. We need the crown to investigate. We need the crown to investigate. I actually need, I need Nancy Grace. I need Nancy Grace on this. I love Nancy Grace. One of uh, my friends I went to college with works for Nancy Grace, and I absolutely live for every second of it. Every second of it. Normie, we need Nancy Grace, and then we need the crown, okay? Um, is this not just so weird, you guys? Like, there's so much. There's so much. So now, as of today, there's a possibility. Is she seeking treatment for a possible ED? Does it have to do with her and William's marriage? Was Kate involved with this Thomas Kingston guy? who is now deceased, has William been having an affair with this Rose Hanbury woman this whole time? Is Kate thinking of leaving the family and now that's why we haven't seen her? Like, what do we think is going on? I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. Okay, Normie said, Nancy Grace would dissect this so good and piece to piece. Normie, I'm glad you love her too. What do y'all think is happening? What is your theory? What do you think? What do you believe? Jelena said, if the eating disorder theory is true, that sounds so sad. That's the theory I agree with the most. Jelena, I agree with you. I I think that's the one that does seem plausible to me, the most plausible. Um, I, obviously, like, the affairs are possible too. The royals love an affair. Love an affair, obviously. Um, but that does seem the most plausible, and that's that's sad, that's scary. And that's why I said at the beginning that it's giving Diana because Diana very openly talked about her struggles um, with her own ED and because Charles made some comments to her and she just was never able to kind of get out of that cycle. And it's horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Either way, um, Jessica, to your point, Jessica said, I love Kate. I hope she's okay. And all the speculation is just that. Exactly. This is all speculation. We all obviously hope that she's okay. That tenfold. I definitely don't want any of this seriousness to be true. I hope she is somewhere recovering, doing what she needs to do, getting healthy. Um, but it's just like too many things are going on. Too many things are adding up. And the problem with the royal family not saying anything is that now we're running the narrative, right? The speculations out there are running the narrative instead of them running the narrative. Yes, this is all alleged. Thank you, Valerie. But I think the more that they don't say anything, the more we spiral as the public. And I know that there was a policy when the queen was alive, never complain, never explain, but I'm sorry, we need some explaining. We need some explanations because things are getting dark, things are getting wild, and them like coming, coming out and talking about the photo and then not talking about anything else is just weird. It is, it is weird, something feels off, um, so E. De, e Delon said, I think all the speculation is to cover up for Charles. He's very ill. But if that's the case, then wouldn't they want to reassure the public that they're, the heir to the throne is healthy and fine? Like if Charles is really that sick and if Charles is really that unwell, wouldn't they want to reassure the public that, okay, Prince King, or King Charles is not doing great, but William is okay. Kate is okay, 
and God forbid anything happens to King Charles, we have the heir and the queen. They're ready to go. I don't know. It just feels weird. They did say that she would be back at Easter. Remember, we're hearing reports that that might be pushed back by five weeks. Um, so I guess we'll wait for Easter. But at this point, I, I think we need something before Easter. You know what I mean? We need something before Easter because the, the grainy car photos are not doing it. The math ain't mathing. And the royal family is picking and choosing what they want to respond to and what they want to make comments on. And at this point, I need Kate in front of a camera in order to believe that she's okay. And I know that's asking a lot. I know she's in recovery. I know she her appearance might not be what we're used to seeing her look like. But at this point, to believe that everything is okay, I need to see her on a live broadcast. And that's just, that's just me. I know that's asking a lot. I know that's being selfish. I know some people are going to be like, Madison, you're the worst. She's recovering. But we're talking about a woman who pushed a watermelon out of the size of a lemon and then was on the front steps of the hospital six hours later. Okay. She is resilient. She is strong. And I think if she knew that things were getting this out of hand and this speculative, she would want to put it to rest. Why is it not being put to rest? It's weird. Jersey Girl J. <laughs> Jersey Girl J said, it's giving Twilight Breaking Dawn. Is Kate pregnant with a vampire baby? Thomas Kingston. Thomas Kingston. No, obviously. Um, that was funny. Uh, you guys know I love a Twilight reference. I absolutely live for a Twilight reference. Um, but yes, ultimately, these are all speculations. None of this is confirmed. Um... I just feel like we want to know what is going on and we want to know that she's okay. Ultimately, we obviously are sending her all positive vibes. We're sending her healing vibes. We are wanting everything to be well and good and okay. And again, until I see her on a broadcasted statement, I probably won't believe it because I don't trust the royal family. I'm so sorry. I don't mean to be offensive but I do not trust King Charles. I do not trust a man who said he wanted to be reincarnated as a tampon and shoved up Camilla. I'm sorry, I cannot trust him for that. Uh, ever since then, I cannot trust the man. So we'll have to obviously wait and see. Sending Kate all of our love, sending her the healing vibes, and hopefully, yes, Tabitha, pray for the future queen. Hopefully, we get answers soon. Hopefully, we get answers soon, y'all. Cause it's getting spooky out here and it's feeling like a documentary and I don't like it for one, one, one second. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Kim Kardashian, Bianca Sensory and get into Kanye and Haley and then Selena and Taylor and Travis because I see y'all talking about this. I'm glad that also you guys are all um, on the same page as me about being interested in this, wanting to know what's going on, sending her positive vibes, not trusting King Charles. Um, I, I'm seeing all the comments and Chris said, I don't trust him. He's a shady guy. I know. I know. Jessica said, no one deserves, no one does Diana. No one goes after Diana. A lot of people still think he was the one who led to Diana passing. Jessica, you know, I'm one of those people. You know, I'm one of those people who thinks Charles had something to do with it. And I know that's very American to me, but I'm a Diana stan. I'm a Diana stan and... I've never believed that it was as coincidental as it was. Um, but yeah, just sending sending Kay all of the vibes, all of the all of the healing vibes, and I hope she's okay. Um, Brittany said the royal family's got secrets on secrets. T T. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, you guys, and talk about Kim Kardashian and Bianca Sensory because they were seen hanging out together for the first time ever. Wild. Fan videos of Kim and Bianca showed the two standing next to each other at a Vultures listening party in San Francisco last night. They didn't really interact much. They were very focused on the show. All of the kids were there. They were kind of in and out of the listening party because they were reportedly working on their schoolwork. Now, what's interesting, you guys, in addition to Kim and Bianca being in the same place, they were apparently very cordial. They looked like they were having a good time. Everything seemed fine. Um, I'm sure they were 
Oh, 333, everybody. Make a wish. Manifest on 333. I'm sure we're being like a smidge fake to one another, but if they have to be a little fake to be cordial to one another in front of the kids, they're doing what they got to do. You know what I mean? I'm sure there was a level of fakeness, but it is what it is. Uh, Cass said, giving you my shout out now because my phone's already going slow, so don't know how long I'll be able to comment. Love ya and the House of Hill fam. Cass, thank you for being here. Love and appreciate you so, so, so much. I'm sorry your phone is going slow. I hope you're still able to get the tea. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the shout out. We love you. We see you. We don't know what we would do without Mama Cass. Mama Cass keeps us together. Mama Cass, just like Mama Hill, you keep us together and we love and appreciate you. Um, what's interesting, you guys, in addition to Kim and Bianca being seen together, one of Kanye's longtime friends, Justin LeBoy, he was caught by TMZ at LAX and he said that he loves Bianca. She's perfect for Kanye. He's never seen Kanye happier. And he also said that he thinks Kanye and Bianca are going to have a bunch of babies in the future. What do we think about Kanye having more babies with Bianca? What do we think? What do we think? Part of me is like, babies are blessings, and if they're really that happy, they should have children together. But then the other half of me is like, Kanye isn't totally present for the four children he has now. Is this a good idea? Allegedly, 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 allegedly. We hear he is not incredibly present for his current children, allegedly. So when I saw the headline that one of Kanye's besties is saying, him and Bianca have a ton of babies in their future, I felt mixed about it. I wasn't entirely sure. Uh, Irene said, I have no words. Normie said, we don't need any more of his DNA in the world. Um, Miss Jackie X said, he's hardly there for his other kids. Jessica said, that man should not procreate anymore. And then Michaela said, he only cares about North, like, sir. Oh, yes, you're right. He lo loves North. Because North is, North is very much like Kanye. She's releasing her first album. Obviously, all of that. I love Pug said, Bianca doesn't know what to show the world. She thought stripping naked is such a good idea. T, but I do think, I do think, um, also Kanye was making her wear a lot of that stuff. Uh, Brianna said, I'm not sure. And let's see who else. Poetry Chick said, can he afford more children? Betty said, not to be sexist, but men need to get a grip about having multiple children and not paying attention to them. I don't think that's sexist. I think all, anyone who wants to be a parent, like you can't bring kids into this world unless you're going to pay attention to them. You know what I mean? Um, JR said, I don't think it's a good idea. He's not stable enough for a dozen children. And I heard that and I was just like, that is weird. I don't know. Again, 50, 50 on one hand, I'm like, if y'all are really in love and happier than ever, how about it? And then on the other hand, I'm like, with all of you thinking this does not sound like a good idea. Um, shout out to Valeria. Hello, everyone tuned in live for the first time. Hello. Welcome. I'm so happy you're here here. Welcome to your first live. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Kanye and Haley, you guys. Uh, Sacred Space, love you. I got to get out early. That's totally okay. You got to come back and get the Kanye and Haley T, Selena and Taylor and Travis because we are getting into this Kanye Haley situation, you guys. So Kanye West dragged Haley Bieber on Instagram recently, which I will say she wasn't the only one that he went after. He posted a long Instagram rant and obviously has since deleted it, basically saying F you to anybody who doubted he couldn't get a number one song again. His song Carnival hit number one on the Billboard charts, okay? He went off in this Instagram caption. He said F you to anyone and everyone who works at Adidas, F anyone who goes to school with anyone whose parents work at Adidas because Adidas tried to destroy him. He also said, F everybody at the fashion houses that sided with Gabby and Hailey Bieber. F each and every one of y'all. And the reason why he is once again coming after Hailey Bieber is because you guys remember in 2022, two years ago, Kanye came for Hailey and her nose job literally out of the blue. Like 
came for Hailey Bieber out of nowhere talking about how she had a shambly nose job. And obviously people were like, leave Hailey Bieber alone. And the Gabby he's referring to in that sentence with Hailey is Gabriella Karifa Johnson, who is the editor of Vogue. Remember, she condemned Kanye for his comments that he made. And he came for her and said, you know, that she doesn't know how to dress. She has ugly clothes, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people sided with Gab Gabby and were like, you cannot come for the editor of Vogue like this. This is inappropriate. So when he says, F everybody at the fashion houses that sided with Gabby and Hailey Bieber, that's why. Because he previously tried to come for Hailey and her alleged nose job. And he tried to come for Gabriella, the editor of Vogue. Um, he also called out Drake. <laughs> like he ended his caption was just like, also F Drake. And Drake posted the most hilarious meme, you guys, on his Instagram story. It's a video of 50 Cent. And at the end of the video, 50 Cent was like, why F me though? And it is so funny to me. You guys know I love 50 Cent. I think 50 Cent is shady in the most hilarious way. So the fact that Drake responded to Kanye West saying F Drake with a 50 Cent meme, y'all know I was living. Like I was giggling for 10 minutes over here this morning. Like I thought that was so funny to me. And honestly, I will say, I do feel for Haley in this situation because I think Kanye needs to leave the girl alone. You know what I mean? Like she has nothing to do with this. She very much, I'm sure, wants to be excluded from this narrative. And she has way bigger problems going on, in my opinion, in my opinion. Uh, Brianna said, if Kanye is going to speak his mind, he's going to say what he wants to say. And that's the T. He does not hold back. When his fingers start typing, he does not hold back. Michaela said, the man clearly needs a hug. Um, <laughs> I just, you guys, he really just went for everybody. He went for everybody. Uh, I want to also shout out Ciara, New Mexico in the house. We love our girl. Love that you spit nothing but facts. You know, I have a special place in my heart for New Mexico. I was born in Albuquerque, so I love it. Thank you for being here. Um, Amani said Kanye is very opinionated, very opinionated. Kim said Kanye is all over the place. And then Miss Jackie X said, He's just mad. I'm surprised he didn't say anything about Taylor Swift and thankful. Literally, I'm so happy he didn't say anything about Taylor Swift. I think Kanye knows it's in his best interest at this point not to go for the Swifties. Like he knows that that would just backfire. And, but him coming for Haley, I will say, come on. You know what I mean? I feel like that was unnecessary. I feel like that was not needed. She has nothing to do with the situation and she has enough problems going on. You guys, like I told you at the beginning of this video, uh, at the beginning of the happy hour hang, in addition to everything Haley's been dealing with, Kanye dragging her on social media saying F you, all of the rumors of marital issues with her and Justin, Justin leaving a comment on Madison Beer's Instagram, all the rumors on the nastiness. The Daily Mail caught Haley leaving dinner in West Hollywood last night, and the headlines are saying that she was purposely hiding her wedding finger so people couldn't tell if she was wearing her ring or not. So there's all these photos where Haley's leaving the sushi place and her hands in her pocket to try to cover up the fact that she may or may not have been wearing her, wearing her wedding ring. Okay, Jelena, I agree with you. Jelena said, I still don't feel like Justin was flirting with Madison, LOL. He's known that girl since she was 13. Absolutely, obviously, like we talked about on Monday, I don't think Justin Bieber was like purposely flirting with Madison Beer. I just said, optically, it doesn't look good. And I stand by that, you know what I mean? Optically, when all these rumors are going on and your wife is doing the most, um, to defend your relationship and your marriage, and then you go and leave hard eyes underneath another girl's picture. It's just like, girl can't catch a break. Girl can't catch a break. That's more of what it is. I think it's just more of the optics of it all. You know what I mean? Um, 
it's not necessarily that he was flirting or not. It's just in the midst of all of these things, it doesn't look good for her um, or their marriage. Not even for her. You know what I mean? Uh, Javonna said, must be horrible dealing with private matters out in public. T. I think it, it, it looks like it's taken a toll for sure. Epic Turtle said, if my partner sends those emojis to a girl he's known forever, I'm assuming they're having an affair until proven, proven otherwise. Epic Turtle said, if, honestly, the fact he's known her since 13, I'm even more suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. And Epic Turtle said, I'm suspicious. I'm giggling. I am giggling. Miss Jackie X said, every now and then I feel bad for Haley. This is one of those times. Miss Jackie X, that's how I feel too. Which all of those trolls out there who love to troll me and think that I hate the Bieber so much. Are you listening loud and clear? I feel bad for Haley in this instance. I feel bad for the fact that her sister is acting a fool, making headlines for throwing dirty tampons at people. I feel bad that her dad is posing really weird, spooky videos on Instagram and fueling the narrative that there's issues going on with her and Justin. I feel bad that she's posting on Instagram, defending her marriage, defending her relationship. And then her husband goes and leaves some questionable emojis under Madison Beer's Instagram. Again, not saying he was flirting. I'm just saying optically doesn't look good. And then on top of all of that, this girl has Kanye West saying F you in an Instagram caption. Like it is truly a tough week to be Hailey Bieber. I'm not even kidding. It is, it's a, it's a bad, bad, bad week. It's tough. Brianna said, imagine if he did that on Selena's post. You guys, if he left a hard eye underneath Selena Gomez's Instagram, I think the internet would combust. I think the internet would absolutely explode. Uh, Laura said, has Justin ever defended her? The last time Justin defended Haley publicly was probably, uh, I feel like was at least four years ago. Like not since they first got married and he just jumped on Instagram because she was doing an Instagram lot. You guys, the things I have tucked away in my head. Um, I mean, he probably hasn't publicly defended her since about, I would maybe say 2019. Um, and the one instance that's really sticking out to me is when, um, Hailey Bieber was doing an Instagram live for Bare Minerals and she was promoting a product that she was, you know, helping them with. She was a Bare Minerals spokesperson for a long time and she was on a Bare Minerals Instagram live and a ton of people were in the comments of the Instagram live, um, talking about Selena and dragging Hailey and just being really nasty and Justin posted a thing and was like, please stop coming for my wife. He posted a video of a fan. Remember, he posted like a fan's face and video on his Instagram being like, people like you are the problem. Leave my wife alone. Leave us alone. Um, that was the last time that he really came for came to Haley's defense publicly. Um, it was a crazy, 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 crazy time. Um, but ever since then, it's really been Haley defending their relationship relationship to the public and Justin more so taking the back seat, not really defending her as hard as she has been defending him. So, um, yeah, it's been a minute. It's definitely been a minute. It was a wild time. And it was, okay, it was 2019. I was like, I feel like it's been a long time since we saw Justin publicly, publicly come to Haley's defense. You know what I mean? Uh, Miss Jackie X said, random, but I wonder if Justin feels he can be his old self with other people because they won't read too much into it. And Haley being his wife might, I don't know. Maybe sometimes she just doesn't want to be on. No, for sure. I think, I think Justin would be happy stepping away from the spotlight. But I don't think Haley is there yet because she's still building her career. You know what I mean? She is still, she is still building her business. She's still building her brand. She's still building her name. And so I'm sure there's part of Justin Bieber that's like, let's move away and never look back. Um, but I, I don't think that she's quite there yet. 
honestly. And like I said, tough week to be her, honestly. Tough week to be her. Peachamon said, TBH, I don't think Haley defending herself helps at all. She fuels the fire while her husband stays quiet and avoids the public. Alicia said, I think since all the internet came out with all the facts of how she copied Selena, etc., he hasn't defended her. Like, he was shocked to see all the evidence at one time. Alicia's like, Justin Bieber has a burner account, and he was shocked just like the rest of us. JR said, I think Haley hiding her ring finger is bait. She likes that. Just get the rumors flying all for attention. And if that's the case, JR, if that is the case, then that's when I get sassy. That's when I get sassy about Haley, you guys, because I'm like, if you're doing it for press, you can't fuel rumors for press and then get upset about it. Like either fuel the rumors and own up to it and take the criticism that comes with that or don't and don't say anything at all. You know what I mean? You guys know that's always, I feel like she kind of bounces back and forth at times and that's when I get irritated. It's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. I feel nothing personal towards her. Um, we comment on situations. We comment on what's happening in the news. Um, but like I said, this week I feel like she she has a lot going at her. A lot of people coming for her, and uh, I think it has to be it has to be hard. It definitely has to be has to be a hard week to be Haley Bieber. I mean, if the marriage thing wasn't enough. Her dad talking like a conspiracy theorist on Instagram has to be weird. And then also the sister making things worse. You know what I mean? No one wants to see Haley Bieber's sister arrested for throwing dirty tampons. Imagine seeing that when you open your phone in the morning. I mean, that has to be A, really gross and B, really frustrating. You know what I mean? Uh, Brenda, what happened with Kanye and Haley? Rewind it a little bit, but Kanye dragged Haley in a recent Instagram caption talking about his song going number one. He said, F you, Haley. And, or F the, fa F the fashion houses that sided with Haley Bieber and Gabby. I go and explain it all. So just rewind it a little bit, but he, uh, he came for Haley Bieber in one of his posted and then deleted Instagram captions. Um, but we're gonna go ahead move on talk really quick about selena gomez and get into this taylor and travis t uh selena gomez you guys she did a panel thank you miss jackie x for reminding me miss jackie x said where are the likes on this video you guys if you're here and you've not given this video a thumbs up can you please 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 do so it really 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 helps me more than you know if there are some people who have not gotten their youtube notification yet um it helps YouTube know that people are engaging, watching, liking, um, and it helps people get their YouTube notifications. And I know some people will be very thankful if you do that right before the Selena and Taylor and Travis T. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so Selena, you guys, did a panel at South by Southwest to discuss mental health, and she reflected on her documentary, My Mind and Me, um, on Apple TV, now that it's been out for over a year. Thank you, Chris, for sharing this video. You're the best. The, you guys, the more we share, the more we like, uh, the more we grow, and then we get to take that international tour that we keep manifesting, and the domestic tour too. But the more we grow, the more fun things we get to do, and the more we get to take this show on the road. Um, so Selena was on this panel, you guys. She was reflecting about her documentary, and she said that it makes her, quote, sick to hear the things that she said about herself at the beginning of the documentary. She said that it, quote, bums her out. She then went on to say that she thinks it's something everybody can relate to and that it's important to speak to ourselves with kindness. She said that it's weird for her to see herself say those things because she would never say them to herself now. And I just feel like, again, another good reminder, I feel like we're this happy hour hang, we're having celebrity tea and life lessons. Be proactive about our health and Selena is reminding us that we need to be nicer to ourselves. We need to speak nicer to ourselves, which I also am guilty of sometimes not doing. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think we can all relate that sometimes we look at ourselves in the mirror or we see a photo and we're like, oh my God, look at my hair. Oh my God, I have a pimple. Oh my God, I look fat. Oh my God, blah, 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 blah. Um, I actually never say the F word. I always say I look fluffy. I think fluffy is a little nicer. You know what I mean? Um, but I think we're all guilty of some negative self-talk. And I like that Selena, A, is very open about it. And B, um, is reminding us that we need to speak positively to ourselves. Because sometimes I think it's easy to be hard on ourselves. Um, we're obviously our biggest critics. 
Giovanna said, I admire her vulnerability. I do too. And so did Marie. Selena's vulnerability is the best. Robert said, I can definitely relate to Selena. I think we all can. You know what I mean? Simple Flamingo said, we all have a different view of ourselves. T. And I think it's a good reminder that we need to speak kindly to ourselves because the words we speak manifest. And so if we're constantly speaking negative things, negativity is going to manifest. This is something I'm really trying to work on, guys, especially as somebody who has anxiety and is like always worried about the future. If you are always worried, you're manifesting the worries. You know what I mean? If we're always speaking negatively about ourselves, Selena's like, we're going to manifest the negative. So we need to speak positively about ourselves and our situations. So that's what we manifest. You know what I mean? Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Wow, this is one of my favorite happy hour hangs ever. Because I feel like we're talking about the tea, but we're also getting personal, reminding ourselves of some lessons, and I'm living for it. I just wanted to say. Okay, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, you guys. One of my favorite topics ever. Travis Kelsey opened up about his time in Singapore with Taylor Swift on the new episode of the New Heights podcast. He talked about how they went to a large indoor greenhouse because he's a big plant guy. He, he was like, big, big plant guy. Love plants. We went to the indoor greenhouse. It was so effing cool. I saw an indoor waterfall. Like he was just geeking out over this indoor greenhouse, which I find so sweet because I feel like when you look at Travis Kelsey, you would not be like, big plant guy. But apparently, big plant guy, you guys. And Taylor knows where to take him. Took him to the biggest indoor greenhouse ever, which I love. Um, he then went on to say, quote, I got to see two amazing shows of the Eras Tour. The last leg that Taylor has until she's back at it here in a couple months. So we know Taylor has a little time off. Her and Travis are actually currently in L.A., um, I love the press was trying to be messy, you guys, and I was not having one single second of it. The press was trying to be messy. Remember how on Monday I told you guys how they went to that super exclusive Oscars after party together, the Gucci party? No photos were taken because there's no photos inside. It's very exclusive. Remember how I told you guys about this, but they apparently were having, you know, a great time. Um, the paparazzi then saw Travis out by himself and he was getting gas, like something very normal. But Travis was seen out like getting gas and running errands by himself. And all the headlines were like, Travis Kelsey spotted solo after he was with Taylor at an after party. It's like, yeah. Can the man not go get gas? Like you think Taylor wants to go get gas with him? No, absolutely not. I feel like that's one of the main perks about having a partner. It's like, I don't wanna go get the gas. Can you go get the gas? Like. I like sometimes Papa Hill puts gas in my car. You know what I mean? And I just did not like that people were trying to make it this big deal that he was seen out running errands alone and like having lunch with friends without Taylor. They're fine. They're both in LA. They're Gucci. They're allowed to not be together 24 seven because newsflash, they are in a real relationship. Cause I already saw, you guys know, I love me some La La Kent from Vienna Pump Rules. But I saw a clip from her podcast where she was like, Taylor and Travis are PR. It's a PR relationship. And I'm like, la la. Love you. Stan you. But don't be sitting up there on your podcast saying that Taylor and Travis are a PR relationship. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, also, new report from Entertainment Tonight, you guys. A source said that Taylor is, quote, happier than ever and so in love. The source went on to say that Taylor likes that Travis is proud of her and that he isn't afraid to show his love for her publicly. The source said that Taylor is in a great place and feeling free to live her life more openly. And then this source ended their insider info saying, quote, Taylor views Travis as a true partner and someone she can have a real future with. So I saw someone ask, when do we think the engagement is coming? Y'all? It will come, it will come, it will come, it will come. I think maybe the summer, maybe the summer or fall. Um, we know Travis is planning on continuing to support Taylor on her tour. Um, we've heard that he wants to go to Europe with her this summer. She picks up in Paris in May. I assume Travis will be there. 
Um, and so I think that they're going to continue to spend this time together. Again, this is another little blip where they're both off of work. Taylor is on a break from the Eras tour. Travis is off season right now. I will say during the off season is typically when football players film a lot of their brand deals and a lot of their commercials. So Travis will, you know, probably be working and spending time with her, working, spending time with her. Um, but I think it's a good thing. This is one of the times that they're actually going to be able to be together uninterrupted. I love that they're spending some time in LA. I would love to obviously spot them, but I think it'd be easier to see them in Kansas City than here. Um, also, when I'm here, you guys, I'm so oblivious. Like, we will be out places and my friends will be like, do you see so-and-so? There's Amy Adams. There's blah, blah, blah. I never notice anybody because I'm so just like in my own zone. Um, but I, I'm living for it. I am, I'm living for it. I want to read Jelena. Unpopular opinion. I love Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey dating, but when it comes to them getting serious, I'm concerned. Travis just seems like somebody who just wants to have fun, not settle down. Jelena, I will say, give him a chance. Give him a chance because you would think that because he does come off kind of as like a goofy player, athlete, whatever. But he is very sentimental. I also think he really admires Jason Kelsey. And Jason has a family. He's been married. He has three kids. And Travis has openly talked about several times how he's ready to settle down. He's ready to have a wife. He's ready to have kids. So I know it seems like he would be like that. And he gives off the vibe, like a clout chasing vibe at Big Turtle. I know on the outside it feels like that. But I promise you, give him time. Give him time to grow on you. Just give him a chance. Give him a chance. Because I really do believe that he wants to be settled. He wants to be a husband. He wants to be a dad. And he is looking at a life past football. I really, really do believe that. And I'm not just saying that because I like Taylor Swift. Um, I really, really do think they have some serious potential, truthfully. Um, Roxanne said, PR is bull. Anyone who has seen the video of when they were at dinner and did not know anyone was filming and he leans over and kisses her, PR would not be doing that. These two cannot touch or kiss. Literally, Roxanne, take the words right out of my mouth. I also am just like, it makes me giggle that anyone thinks Taylor Swift needs PR. She is Taylor Swift. Like, she does not need PR. And then Lala also said that the NFL put them together because the NFL needed money. The NFL, you guys, is one of the richest organizations in the world. The NFL does not need money. Now, did Taylor Swift bring a new demographic to the NFL? Sure, but the NFL didn't need money. The NFL is rich. Roger Goodell, everybody hates him because he's so rich and he's kind of a jerk apparently. But nobody, nobody needs more money. Taylor Swift doesn't need more money. The NFL doesn't need more money. You know what I mean? Think their bank accounts are fat and full. Taylor Swift would not be doing this if she was not in it to win it. You know what I mean? Chris said the NFL had billions before Taylor. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I will say the NFL needs Taylor in the sense of, obviously, I think it made a lot of us more invested. Um, I was obviously always invested in the Chiefs because I'm from Kansas City. Um, and But I have friends here who became more invested once Taylor was dating Travis. But truthfully, nobody needed this to happen <laughs> for any reason. Um, like, it's just so silly to me when people say that it's for, it's for PR, it's for money. It's like, it's fine. Uh, Giovanna said they seem very invested in each other's lives. It seems very serious and genuine. And I agree. I agree. And I know, Betty, I would never hate you for that. Betty said, I'm a Swifty, but I don't like him for her. Please don't hate me. Betty, I would never. The whole point of these lives is to have a conversation. That is why I love them. Because we get to have a conversation with one another right here. It is okay if you disagree. That is totally, totally fine. I would never hate you for that. I'm happy that you share your opinion with me. As far as people who think that it's like moving too fast, you have to remember, you know, they are well into their 30s. Um, 
when you get older, I do feel like you don't have to date as long before you know whether that person could be your person. You know what you're looking for. You know what you expect. I've always thought like I will have a quick engagement because I'm very particular and picky and I don't waste my time. So I know when my man comes into my life, I'm going to know probably quickly and everyone's going to be like, Madison's nuts. Madison's getting engaged in six months. Is she okay? Pulse check one, two, one, two, but it's going to be fine. So I don't really think them getting serious quick is a red flag in my personal opinion because I think as you get older, you know what you're looking for, you know what you want, and you don't have to date as long to figure that out. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Superstar Bella said, Travis is an athlete and they love attention. They are used to it. It started in Little League, so that is why he's okay with Taylor's fame. They're 34, not too young, not too old to marry quick. I agree. And also, I, I think Taylor, as this source said, I think Taylor does love that Travis loves her out loud. Like, this is really the first boyfriend ever who was like, call me Taylor Swift's boyfriend. I don't care. Call me Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. You know what I mean? Him, he doesn't care. Whereas Joe Alwyn never wanted to be known as Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Jake Gyllenhaal never wanted to be known as Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Like, everyone was more so, her previous boyfriends were almost like embarrassed to be connected to her because they wanted their own identity. Whereas Travis Kelsey is like, that's, you don't know my name. You just know me as Taylor Swift's boyfriend. I live for it. Love it. Go Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Like he doesn't care. Jason Kelsey doesn't care. Their podcast just won an award and they literally were like, shout out to the Swifties. Like they are fully embracing and knowing the fact that they are getting this attention because of Taylor Swift. And they're not mad about it. They're not annoyed by it. They've embraced it and they love it. So that's kind of why I I live for it. Robert said, LOL, can I join the Chiefs fan club? Robert, yes. The Chiefs fan club is always looking to add members, especially because now people hate us because we've won two years in a row. So now everyone is a big hater. So Robert, please, 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 please join us. And I just want it on the record. We weren't good for a long time, okay? We were not good for a long time. So let us be good. Let us be good. Let us have Taylor Swift, all right? It, it, it was a long road to get here. It was a long road. Jessica said, if you know, you know. Jessica T. T, T, T. Uh, Irene said, hi, Madison. Why people think that Travis is some nobody and not a future Hall of Fame tight end? Irene, that's just because, like, not everyone follows football. You know what I mean? We've been knowing that Travis is huge. Um, Travis is very, very talented. I mean, he broke, like, how many even records just this one season? Um, but, you know, whenever... People hear about him more often. They're going to attribute it, obviously, to Taylor. You know? Uh, cousin said, I wonder if he's okay with it because of all the trash talking done in sports. That's why he's fine with all the chatter around them. Cousin, you're probably right. I mean, everyone loves to talk ish on Travis Kelsey. But he doesn't care. And I love... There was a... What game was it? One of the players was trying to be shady towards him. And he was like, that's fine if you want to be mean to me. If you want to be rude, I can be rude times 10. And I'm like, that is the energy. That is the energy I love. It is so, so, so funny. Bailey said, what a flex to say Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Why would they not like that? Bailey, because some men have fragile egos and they cannot handle being known because of their partner. Travis, on the other hand, does not care. Stormcloud, I'm so sorry you did miss the Kate Middleton news. Back it up though, because we had a really big Kate Middleton discussion. Really talked about a lot of the new theories a lot of the stuff that's out there. So definitely go rewind and watch the Kate Middleton tea because we really got into it today. So definitely go back. Um, other than that, you guys, that is all the tea I have for you. Is there anything else that you want to discuss? Let me know. Yes, Jonna, Calvin is, Calvin Harris is very talented in the EDM world. I'm not saying her previous boyfriends weren't talented. Her previous boyfriends were all very talented and very well known. I'm saying a lot of her previous boyfriends did not like being known as Taylor's boyfriend because a lot of them were like, I'm a talented DJ, I'm a talented musician, like I stand alone from Taylor Swift. They didn't like that people would call them her boyfriend. Whereas Travis is like, 
also very talented, also stands alone from her, but he doesn't get mad if people call him Taylor's boyfriend. He embraces it, which I don't think she's ever really had anyone like that before. Uh, Sayara said, TikTok man, your point of view. So this is actually really interesting. So the House of Representatives did pass the bill to ban TikTok unless they sell to an American-based company. And if it passes the Senate, then it goes to President Biden. And he's already said that he would sign the bill to pass, uh, to pass the ban. Um, see guys, I also love politics too. So for everyone who likes to call me dumb, I love sports. I love the tea and I love getting into personal topics. Um, as far as the TikTok ban goes, I have mixed reviews on it. Honestly, on one hand, I'm like, that would be horrible because it's given people a lot of income. It's given a platform to a lot of people who wouldn't have one. Um, it's helped a lot of people grow. It's helped a lot of people grow their business. It's become such an integral part of our culture. I can't imagine not having it at this point. But then the other part of me is like the negative side of TikTok is a, they are tracking all of our information, which for me, I'm not as worried about because if anyone's spying on me, they just see me spilling the tea. But they are tracking our information, which obviously is scary. I also don't love sometimes that it does give everyone like a voice in a platform because I think it spreads a lot of negativity and I think it spreads a lot of false information because people just want to put their opinion out there. Um, so I really, I really go 50-50 on the TikTok thing. Um, for me personally, if TikTok gets banned, uh, okay, you know what I mean? Um, I think I have y'all here and y'all are always my priority. So for me, if TikTok gets banned, okay. Um, I feel bad for the people who rely on it as their main source of income. I think that'd be really scary. Um, but I kind of, I could really go either way. If it stays amazing, if it doesn't, Okay, you know, I think then uh, people who went to journalism school and actually, you know, got their degree and did what they need to do, um, they'll probably have an easier time kind of coming back up because TikTok has made everyone a journalist. So I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens. I also think I'm Vera. I agree with you. I'm sure there will be another platform after TikTok. Someone else will just come along and copy the copy the idea. You know, I even look at Instagram. Instagram started doing reels. YouTube has YouTube shorts. Um, we're now being encouraged to go live in the YouTube shorts feed. So even if TikTok goes away, something is going to come in its place. You know, something is, is definitely going to be here. So we'll see. We'll definitely see what happens. I saw someone say something about Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet. Opinion on whether they're broken up or not. I think it was Jessica. I actually don't think they're broken up. Hot take. I know a lot of people think that they um, are broken up, but I don't think they're broken up. He's on the Dune press tour right now. Um, she did avoid asking questions about him or answering questions about him during a recent interview. But honestly, I, I think that they're still together. I think that they're just not physically together right now because he's doing Dune press. But I don't think that they're broken up yet. I I think that they're still together as of right now. They're I think they've cooled off a little bit. I think they've definitely cooled off. Um, I don't think they're as hot and heavy and as serious as they were. But I don't think that they are officially broken up. In my opinion, we'll see. But I don't I don't think so. At least not yet. I, I don't know if they have long-term long-term potential necessarily, but she did introduce him, remember, to her kids. And I don't think she would do that if she thought they were breaking up anytime soon. So we'll see. Katya said, Madison, I would definitely like to get an insight on your fashion as a thick girly. We need them tips. Katya, okay. I will start. Should I just start posting my outfits? Is that weird? Would you guys watch those on YouTube shorts? Is that weird? I'll do it. I, I feel like I, I don't know that much. I just know what like works for me. But I'm five feet tall and thick. I got a big booty. So if it helps, I will definitely, definitely do that. 
um, just for fun, for the people who want it. I also am trying to launch a membership also, you guys, so we can um, get to know each other even more. So I'll start posting my outfits. Jessica, I've not forgotten about the skincare routine. I'm going to film that tonight. Um, so definitely we'll do that as well. Jelena said, Madison, you're a clean look fashion girly. Jelena, I really am. Like, I think that's why I never feel like I should post my outfits because I dress very, not simple, but I love a good basic. Like right now I'm wearing a classic white crop tee. Like I love a lot of basics and mix in, mix in a few trendy pieces here and there um, because sometimes trends just don't look good on me, honestly. And so I prefer to just like, I'm more of like a classic basics girly and then amp it up with some accessories, a cute bag, a cute shoe. Like that's kind of my vibe. Um, but I'll definitely start just posting my outfits. If you guys don't think it's weird, I'll start posting them. So that way you guys can see them. Um, should I, yeah, I'll do the step back. I'll do the pookie is looking fire, but I'm going to have to hype my own self up because obviously I don't have a jet. So I'll just, I'll hype my own self up. Pookie is looking fire. Yes, that'll be me. Uh, Ciara said, beautifully put, you're an amazing journalist. You work hard. Send our girl some love. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that because whenever people come for me and say like, get a life, like da, 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 the trolls, you know, it kills me because I'm like, hello, I do have a life. This is my life. I love giving you guys information. I love, like Tamara said, that you're, every live you learn something new. That is the biggest compliment. That is the biggest compliment because I, I do feel like what I try to bring differently compared to other channels and other creators is I do have a journalist mindset. So I don't want to give you guys a bunch of BS and I don't want to give you guys a bunch of just like blind items. Like I really want to talk about stories that are actually out there and actually going on and help us sift through them together. You know what I mean? And I hope I give you guys the information in an easy digestible way because I know sometimes I watch the news or I watch some creators and I'm like, I just spent five minutes of my life watching this video and I learned nothing. Like I literally don't know what you were just saying. So I'm hoping that with my experience and my expertise, I give you guys the information in a easy digestible way and then also give us a platform where we can talk about it and share our opinions because a lot of times these people out there are just like giving you just regurgitating an article and it's like I could have read the article give me the highlights and tell me what you think you know what I mean so that's why I that's what I think I bring differently to the table so Sarah the fact that you said that I really really appreciate that like thank you so much I Thank you. Seriously, that means a lot. Uh, Jessica said, my hubby says, thanks for the break from reality. We love sipping together. He calls you his girl. I don't know, should I be jelly? LOL, no. We both love your energy. Thanks for being a ray of sunshine so classy. Jessica, no. You should be happy that your man loves the tea. You, your man loves the tea and I'm both y'all's girl. So I live for that. Thank you for sharing that with me. And you know, I always say, couples who tea together, stay together. So I'm just saying. Just saying. Betty said, you should do a watch party for the Eras Tour Taylor's version tomorrow. <gasps> I should. Uh, I should. I'm so mad. My sister's still going to be in Florida. Um, but we can have a watch party. Would that be weird to do it on live? Or is that like, is that weird? I don't know. You guys, I love, 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 love the Eras Tour. I rented it, obviously, on um, Amazon Prime. But we're getting more songs on Disney+. Plus, So Maroon is going to be on there. There's a couple other ones as well. I don't remember which ones exactly, but we're getting more of the acoustic set on the Disney Plus version. Oh my gosh, some of you haven't seen it yet. Oh, tomorrow's gonna be your first time. You guys, it's iconic. It is so, so, so good. Um, also, we're gonna talk about Love is Blind too, once Love is Blind at, um, airs at 6 p.m. So we can also do that. Uh, Claudia said, let's see, we love that. I'm a nurse. I rely on Madison. Thank you, Claudia. Um, yes, okay, we can do a watch party, y'all. I'll definitely do that. As long as you guys don't judge me for like possibly shedding a tear and dancing. Just saying, because I will I will do that. Um, even, even though I went to the tour and I've already seen it, for some reason I still like get the chills. Such a loser, I know. But I just, I love it so much. Like it is 
so, so, so good. It's incredible. It's one of the best, honestly. Um, Brittany said, Clay better apologize on that stage. Yes, talking about Love is Blind. You guys, I'm so ready for the Love is Blind reunion. I'm so, so, so ready. Oh, I cannot wait to get into it. Um, we'll get into that. Yeah, okay, perfect. So I have some homework. Uh, we're doing a watch party. I need to also fill you guys in on my thoughts of Love is Blind after the reunion. And we, I also need to start posting my daily outfits. So this has been very beneficial, a very beneficial happy hour hang. Not only did we remind ourselves that we need to be proactive about our health, we also reminded ourselves that we need to speak positively to ourselves because what we speak manifests. I got some homework and also we spilled the tea and we caught up. So this was like one of the most fun, successful happy hour hangs ever, you guys. So thank you so incredibly much. I love y'all so much. Make sure you give this video and my skincare routine. Thank you, cousin. I got, I got a long list and I'm living for every second of it. You guys, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your notification bell is on. Make sure you share this video and tell people in your life about the House of Hill so we can keep growing and keep doing fun things, you guys. Um, also, make sure you're following me on Instagram at I am Madison Hill. You can also still find me on TikTok. Well, TikTok's still around. You can find me over there on as well at I am Madison Hill. Um, also, you guys know you can check out my merch store at houseofhill.com. Have the best day ever. We, I will post a time for the watch party in the community tab. So look out for that. And I'll see you all next time. Enjoy the Love is Blind reunion. I can't wait to talk about it. Love you all. Have the best rest of your evening. And I'll see you guys next time.